welcome to IDI's Air Sealing and Insulation Series filmed on location with Matt Reisinger in the Build Show. This is part of our five-part series. Hopefully you've seen the previous episodes of setting up the blower door, locating leaks, and using infrared removing bad insulation. And this is now video number four, air sealing attics and outlets. Today we're going to get into air sealing and really setting yourself apart is what this video series is about. So as part of that, we're going to start out with air sealing the outlets. So let's go right to the house where I'm with Matt Reisinger and look at how we do outlets. Guys, I'm here today with Matt Reisinger from The Build Show and we're going to talk about the outlets in a house. Matt, what are we doing today? All right, Ken. So exterior outlets, interior outlets, it's a huge source of air leaks. And each individual outlet may not be massive, but in a house like this, 2,500 square feet, we might have 75, 100 outlets, each one of them leaking a little bit of air through them. That's death by a thousand cuts. So what we're gonna show you on today's video is how you can use a foam gun to air seal an outlet that's already in place. So Ken, show us how to use this gun and tell me first about this gun and the foam we're using. So the gun that we're using is reusable. As opposed to if I went to my local store and bought just straw foam, yep. I can't control that. It's triple expanding, it's gonna go all over the place. Yeah. With this gun, I can dial this gun down to the point where there's foam barely coming out of it. And show me this can will do a whole lot of outlets. So normally what I'm showing somebody before I go to their house is I'm showing them I can control the level of foam that comes out. And I'll just draw a picture or something like that so they understand I'm not trying to decorate everything in the house. Yep. Now if it's my house, I'm gonna just go for it and go right to the wall. I don't do that normally if I'm not used to this type of stuff. Yep. I'll go ahead and set myself up a tray. The tray's very easy to make. You don't have to spend any money on this. I just took a sheet of notebook paper I've taped it to the wall right below the outlet, but the yep. next thing I want to do is come in one inch. So I'm coming in an inch here, I'm coming in an inch here, and now I've got a nice capture tray in case something happens. Okay, and one thing I want to mention before you start, again, this is window and door foam. This is not the big expansion. We want low expansion. Absolutely. We are just trying to seal. If you can see this gap right here, and you'll see it from the backside too, but if you can see this gap right here, we're going to seal between the box and the drywall where the drywaller didn't get it tight. Yep. So that'll be the first thing we do. Then we're going to go up inside this outlet. And as long as I'm not touching both sides of the outlet, I'm not going to get shocked. Show us how to do it, brother. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and seal this up. Now, if this is your first time using the gun, you'd want to go ahead and practice with this gun on the cardboard like Ken did so you can really make some precise work out of that tip. That's really important. You'll also notice on the back of a standard box, you've got four knockout points. Uh, two in the bottom right and left, and two in the top right and left. And what Ken's doing with that gun is he's filling those things right up. And you'll notice we're not filling the box. If I tried this with straw foam, You'd fill the, whole box. the box would be full of foam. Yeah, we're not trying to fill the box. And that's not what we're trying to do. Good, Ken. Taking a look. You got it? We're good. This, in about 15 minutes, we can just knock that piece off, put the plate back on, and we are done. Man. And knock it off with a knife, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, last question for you, Ken. I noticed that you've got a metal tip in that box. Aren't you worried that you might get a shock on there? I'm staying on one side of the outlet. That's. I don't want to be on both sides. I certainly wouldn't seal both at once. I'd, it'd be a shocking experience, so to speak. <laughs> So I am staying on one side. One thing I do want to talk about, Matt, yep. is also, we mentioned earlier, there's 58 of these on the main floor. Yep. I could seal every outlet mm -hmm. on this floor. It's not going to change your energy picture by even maybe 2%. Is that right? But what it will do, when you think of that stack effect, the energy flowing mm -hmm. up and out the top of the building, yep. that's drawing in dust at the bottom of the building. So when we start talking about less dust in a home, better indoor air quality, things like that, mm -hmm. sealing these moves up the scale of importance at a very rapid pace. Yeah. So while it doesn't change my energy, is this a worthwhile job to do? I think every one of our contractors should be doing it. And if you were to ask the person that owns the home, I bet they want it done. Yeah, that's right. So guys, we got a great opportunity here. You know, We sort of mentioned it in the uh, earlier part of the video, but we've got walls that we can open up. Your customer isn't gonna have that. But I would highly suggest either showing your customer this or 
getting your own video, but we're gonna be able to film the back side of this. So the last one, there was a light in there. This one, you're gonna see the light go out when I go ahead and air seal this. All right guys, quick outro here. Uh, we didn't show you how to clean the gun, so we thought we'd show you that. So Ken, uh, we're using some gun cleaning. Uh, we just call it gun cleaner. Gun cleaner. <laughs> And it's basically acetone, right? Yep. Yeah. In a spray. Okay. In a spray. All right. So show us what to do. Nice part is this gun. We've got stainless steel guns. We've got the plastic guns. Either way, they cost money. I don't like wasting that. You'll notice how well this does. So we got a little stainless steel ball on there. That's not going to stick to my pants. This ball now is all cleaned up. Nice and cleaned up. We'll be able to just put this in the job box, break it out tomorrow, and use it again. That's great. And remember, we're in, a, we're in a remodel situation. You wouldn't do that in your homeowner or in your personal kitchen. But this is getting demoed tomorrow, so we're not super worried about it. Yeah, let's do this outside. <laughs> yeah, next time, let's do it outside. Perfect. That's right. And you know what? This could be done on new construction. This could be done on remodel. This is a great technique. Ken, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for Thanks joining so me. much. One more thing I would say, always wear gloves, and to yeah. Matt's point, if you're a homeowner trying this, turn the power off before you get started. Yeah, yeah, great point. Now we get to part two, sealing the attic floor. For doing this, we're using a couple of different methods. First, we're gonna start with a disposable foam kit. Shout out to Handy Foam for donating the kits for this project. After we're done using that, we're gonna also show you how to do this with gun foam. And for that one, we'll be using Sudol, who also sent us their products for this project. Now the disposable foam kit. So when we're spraying a disposable foam kit, we want to be sure and wear personal protective equipment or PPE. For this, we're wearing the Honeywell full face respirator with the organic vapor cartridge and the P100 filter. We are also going to use plenty of ventilation because we don't want to be breathing off gases from the process of the two chemicals coming together in the attic. To prepare the kit, we do have a full video on foam kits and we want to make sure you get a chance to see that in its entirety. There's a lot more information on there how to get the most out of your kits. But to start off with, just make sure you're storing it at 75 to 80 degrees. Shake it before you start and then open both valves fully. You want to make sure before you put a tip on that you grab an empty box and make sure you have two nice, clean, even streams coming out the end of the hose before you put the tip on that gun. Now we can go ahead and we'll put our tip on. We'll start at the bottom, lock the tip in. We should be ready to go. Let's head for the attic. While using the kit, we want to make sure it stays upright while spraying. If it falls over, we're not going to get an even mixture and then we're going to have to remove that material. If you stop spraying for 30 seconds, realize that the foam is going to set up in the tip and you're going to need a new tip at that point before you go back to spraying. We want to make sure we seal the head of every single wall. All of those walls communicate to the attic, not just the ones on the outside. We also want to make sure we seal all the penetrations in the attic. Can lights are great, but the transformers can overheat. So while we could get foam on the fixture itself, we really do not want to foam in the transformers. We need to make sure that we use a can light cover or something for that. Be careful not to step through the ceiling. You want to make sure you're watching where you're kneeling on the joists. And if you do put your feet on the drywall, just make sure you don't put pressure on it, especially as you stand up. Now for the gun foam method, make sure you shake the cans well, store them at 75 to 85 degrees, but lay down a really good bead. Bring several cans with you to the attic. You're going to go through cans pretty quickly. Make sure you take your time. It's going to take a lot longer than it would with kit foam to seal in all of those penetrations. Remember, Buildings move, and so you want to make sure you use enough foam to get a really good seal. Don't be afraid of using too much. Remember, 
Air sealing is the most important step. You need to take your time and be thorough. Obviously where there's can lights, we want to make sure we use can light covers and we need to seal everything, every penetration that goes down into the house. You're gonna do a great job, so make sure you take pictures and make sure you show them those results. You don't wanna leave without taking good photos. As far as the outlets down inside the house, remember, turn down the flow on the gun. We don't want a major accident happening on the wall. Be sure to show them your cardboard drawing so they're confident you can make that little bitty bead that just goes between the box and the drywall. Have a video showing the results inside the wall. It's really going to help them understand the way you can seal it up. And don't forget to use those capture trays. Even if you're not going to spill anything on the floor, it'll certainly give them a lot of peace of mind. Hopefully this video gave you some great tips you can use. If you like it, definitely share it with others that you know. We really want to get this information out to everyone. I'm sure by now, you're either going to see or you have seen the first four videos. Don't forget to come back and watch Reinsulating and Wrap Up, where we are going to talk about the machines, we're going to talk about some of the selling, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you can do these jobs and make good money doing them. I'm Ken Allison with IDI. If you have any questions on this video or any of our products, reach out to your local branch manager, get a hold of those of us at the corporate office. Our goal is to earn your business every day. And thanks again for watching and we look forward to seeing you for Reinsulating and Wrap Up.